भगवते
that it sometimes overcomes the intelligence, although the mind is supposed to be subservient to the intelligence. For a man in the practical world who has to fight so many opposing elements, it is certainly very difficult to control the mind. Artificially, one may establish a mental equilibrium toward both friend and enemy, but ultimately, no worldly man can do so, for this is more difficult than controlling the raging wind. In the Vedic literature, Katu Upanishad, it is said, Atmanam natinam vidhi, shariram natam evacha, budhim tu sarvatim vidhi, mana pragraham evacha, indriyani hayanahur, vishayam seshu gocharan, atmendriya mano yuktam, bhokte jahur anishinaha. The individual is the passenger in the car of the material body, and intelligence is the driver. Mind is the driving instrument, and the senses are the horses. The self is thus the enjoyer or sufferer in the association of the mind and senses. So it is understood by great thinkers. Intelligence is supposed to direct the mind, but the mind is so strong and obstinate that it often overcomes even one's own intelligence, as an acute infection may surpass the efficacy of medicine. Such a strong mind is supposed to be controlled by the practice of yoga, but such practice is never practical for a worldly person like Arjuna. And what can we say of modern man? The simile used here is appropriate. One cannot capture the blowing wind, and it is even more difficult to capture the turbulent mind. The easiest way to control the mind, as suggested by Lord Chaitanya, is chanting Hare Krishna, the great mantra for deliverance in all humility. The method prescribed is Savai Mana Krishna Padada Vindeyo. One must engage one's mind fully in Krishna. Only then will there remain no other engagement to agitate the mind. Om Ujjhāna Timiram Dasya Janandrana Shalakāya Takshrin Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Buddha Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manorupistam Svātisham Jena Bhūtane Svayam Rūpa Kavāmayam Tathāki Shabhavānti Kham Shandekham Shri Guru Shri Vitapada Kamalam, Shri Guru Vaishnavamsa, Shri Rupam Shadrashatam, Sahagana Raganatam, Tam Tam Sadivam, Shadvaitam Shadhutam, Vijana Saitam, Krishna Chaitam Devam, Shri Gata Krishna Padam, Sahagana Lalita, Sri Visha Kandatamsha, He Krishna Purana Sindho, He Nandho Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta, Tata Kanta Nobhite, Tata Kanshana Bodhongi, Tate Vrindana Vishri, Prashadam Se Devi, Krishna Chaitanya 
Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Adaya Pradhar, Shri Rasadi Gola Bhaktavinda, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Shum Shalom Di Mara Krishna Pramati Vallabhadritam Dasyaham Nibraham Maniye Vayuriva Chududhati Lord Krishna has explained to Arjuna how to practice the Ashtanga Yoga Sutra with its mm, control of the mind, control of the senses, sitting exercises, uh, sitting postures, breathing exercises, concentration, and finally, in the last stage, uh, samadhi, or full absorption in the Supreme, onto the Supreme. But Arjun has uh, rejected this uh, system as impractical. Uh, the in the previous verse. Etasyaham uh, Nipashyanti Chantrava. I don't think I can practice this. I don't, I don't see how. Because the mind is Chantra. Chantra means glittery. Chantra, he, he is uh, an intensifier. Uh, in, indeed, the mind is Chanchali Di Mana Krishna and Pramati. Pramati means always agitated. In the dictionary, uh, Pramati, stirring about, tearing, rendering, troubling, harassing, <laughs> and so on. Uh, the mind is always giving trouble, agitating causing anxiety, stirring about, whirling about. Uh, and to make things worse, Balava, the mind is powerful. We may have a little wind that stirs about, but when you have a hurricane or a tornado stirring, stirring about, now you have serious trouble. Because it's not only stirring, but it's uh, powerful. Balabhat. And dritta, obstinate. Uh, the dritta, favorable meaning is determined. And the unfavorable meaning is obstinate. Pajante man dritta dritta. One should serve Krishna with determination. Uh, but the mind also, you can say, has a mind of its own. The mind is uh, determined, means it's obstinate. Why should I listen to you? Why should I listen to you? I've got my own program. Dritta. Tasya aham nigraham. I think that to control such a mind, uh, Vaimariva Sudushkara is more difficult than controlling the wind. If there's a, a, a storm blowing and you a hurricane, uh, you can't just stand there, stop. <laughs> the wind is powerful and it can't be controlled that way. So Arjun, as a practical person says, I don't see how this system you've prescribed can work for me. It involves controlling the mind by mm, meditation. But the mind is not such an easy thing. Um, now you, uh, the mind agrees to be peaceful and calm, to follow direction. 
actions for meditation. Oh, therefore, Srila Prabhupada said, Arjuna, you don't even find any mention of Arjuna's practicing this system at any time. And if Arjuna couldn't follow it, what will we do? We'll make a show. Om, Om, Om. <laughs> and we'll sit in meditation, but our minds will go all over the place. Hmm? In the Katu Upanishad, it's explained that the, the, this vivid example is given in the Katu Upanishad of the chariot in which the senses are the horses. And the intelligence is the driver. And the mind is the driving instrument. If you have a chariot, then the driving instrument is, is the, the reins. If it's a car, then the driving instrument is the steering wheel. So the driver has to have control of the reins or control of the steering wheel if he loses control then where is your car going? Sometimes we see that, that someone loses control, you know, the steering doesn't work, or somehow he loses control of the wheel. And then to crash into anything, anything could happen. And then what happens to the passenger? Finally the soul or the self is the passenger in the car. And when the senses are not under the control of the mind, or the mind is not under the control of the intelligence, uh, when the horses are not under the control of the driver, then the passenger is in uh, jeopardy. So the, the one has to control the, the mind somehow or other. And uh, that's mentioned in Prophet Savai Mana Krishna Padana. One has to fix the mind on the lotus feet of Krishna. So Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given the uh, method, uh, Kirtaniya Sada, uh, Amanina Manadena Kirtaniya Sada, in a humble state of mind. Uh, one should go on, because by my own power, what can I do? trying to control the mind by my own weak uh, strength, my own weak powers. But Krishna is very powerful. And if we take shelter of Krishna, then Krishna can do the needful. Therefore, uh, one should be very humble and take shelter of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Krishna, or take shelter of the Holy Name of Krishna. Nama Vinati Trinati Kumar Bhagavadrupa Mantra. Namashraya. The Holy Name of Krishna gives shelter to the, you know, to everyone. And it's up to us to take advantage of that shelter of the Holy Name by chanting the Mahamantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. The uh, Kirtan is not just a musical performance, it's a call to the Lord uh, for shelter. We were here this morning, Krishna, Krishna, Bhakshama, Krishna, Krishna, Bhakshama. Oh, Krishna, oh, Krishna, please protect me. Uh, or, Prabhupada, please engage me in your service. If we're engaged in the service of Krishna, then we're in a safe position. And Prabhupada, in his forward to the Vaishnav song book, ends with that way of saying that 
Krishna Kirtan is the safest position in the safest place of the material world. Um, if we're under the shelter of the holy name of Krishna, then we're safe. Mami liye prapajante mami mayami nam tanatite dai liye shavani mami mamama maya durate the material illusory energy of Krishna is very powerful. Durate means very practically insurmountable. But Mami Liye Prabhupada, one surrenders to Krishna. Then my Hamma can't do it. And then, by the grace of Krishna, one can mm, overcome the, this is the strength of the, the power of illusion. Maya is powerful because it's empowered by Krishna. Uh, but if one takes shelter of Krishna, then that same powerful personality of Godhead gives protection. So the mind should be elsewhere in the sixth chapter. Bandura Atmatana Stasya Yena Jena Atmana Jutaha Anatmana Tu Shatru Te Vartita Atmana Shatru The mind can be the best friend of the living being or the living being's worst enemy. When the mind is controlled, then it's a good friend. And when it's uncontrolled, one lives with the worst enemy. So the mind can become our friend when it's purified by being engaged always in the thought of Krishna. And thought of Krishna uh, means especially chanting Hare Krishna. One time Prabhupada said, chanting means thinking. That is to say, if you're chanting, then you're already thinking. And if you just try to think of Krishna, that becomes a little hard. But by chanting Hare Krishna, automatically everything comes. Uh, name, form, the form, qualities, pastimes, everything about Krishna will be revealed uh, in time to the person who chants Hare Krishna sincerely. All right. Questions, comments? Yes. Whereabouts is the mind actually situated in the material body? Whereabout in the mind is the mind actually situated in the material body? The mind is subtle. So you can't pin it down. Where exactly is the air situated? Hmm? We know where where water is situated, we know where something earthly is situated. Mm -hmm. uh, even fire becomes a little more hard to turn down. We know generally where it's situated, but when you see a flame, it's flickering, it's this way, it's that way, where exactly is it? When you get to the air, where exactly is that? And ether. Where is ether? Mm -hmm. It's described someplace that ether is circulating throughout the, um, the whole cosmic manifestation, by use of it, uh, the mind is, and where is the mind? Uh, I'm sitting in Bhagavatam class, and my mind is in California. <laughs> the mind is, is subtle. Sometimes the mind is uh, identified with the heart. And sometimes the mind is thought of as being in the head. But the mind goes all over the place. Sukshma Um It's subtle. The, in fact, we're in the body, but there's a gross body and then there's a subtle body. The mind isn't exactly in the gross body, it's, it's the subtle body. It belongs to the subtle body. And where is the subtle body exactly? Hmm? Even, who was it? Daksha had his head replaced. But still, his mind 
that intelligence were intact. So where exactly uh, is that mind or intelligence? These things are subtle. We may think, you might even answer and say, it's here or it's there, but it's subtle. It can't really be pinned down. It's subtle. And therefore, it's not like, you know, if you could grab it like the reins of a chariot, okay, you know, it's there, grab it. But if you don't know exactly where it is, or if it's not actually something you can grab that way, it's said one should beat the mind with shoes a hundred times, you know, if we could, if only I knew exactly where it was, if it was, you know, right there, bam, 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 and get out my shoes and, you know, beat it to pulp. But where is it? Here, and then it's there. Even we're chanting Hare Krishna, we know where the mind is, it's on the sound of Krishna's name for a moment or two. <laughs> and then it's over here, and then it's over there, and then it's over here, and then it's over there. Therefore, Krishna says, Yato, Yato, Nishchalati. Same thing, Tranchala, Chalati, he's always moving. Yato, Yato, Nishchalati, Manas Chanchala, Astina, unsteady, flickering. Wherever the mind goes because of its unsteady, flickering nature. And one has to bring it under control. So for the yogi, that means by some subtle process of using the intelligence, one has to control the mind while sitting. But for the devotee, the practice is easier. Wherever the mind has gone, just bring it back to this sound. All right, my mind has wandered. Now, back, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. That's practice, but it's practical practice. Wherever the mind has gone, bring it back to the sound. If there's no sound, where am I bringing the mind back to? To a subtle place that's not quite identified. The yogis have to practice the subtle art of bringing the mind back to in one place. That also some, you know, can say everything personal is very difficult to identify that place. But the devotees had it easy. Um, wherever your mind is wandering, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna. Therefore, Ukirtana, chant loudly. <coughs> or if it's jump up loud enough so that we can hear so that the mind will be brought back, brought back, brought back. Is that okay? Yeah. So why we often say you have to use your brain to use your intelligence? If it's it, it, this is a manner of speaking. Yeah. You have to use your brain when we mean your intelligence. But the brain, if you look at the brain, it, it's made of earth, water, fire, air. Mm. Mm. It's made of those elements. You can take your brain and dissect it. I mean, you couldn't, but yeah. mm -hmm. the brain can be put on a dissecting table. And you can identify this part, that part. And they're made of this, and they're made of that. It's finally a machine. Uh, made of gross matter. Uh, but the intelligence is different. When you say you use your brain, uh, it means something more than the brain. Even there was an interesting incident. Um, this is written up in scientific journals. There was one student who um, was somehow he needed a, a, a head scan, you know, uh, imaging. Uh, maybe he hit his head or something. So. They do these medical scans, x-rays and MRIs and CAT scans and so on. So he was called in, or he, he needed to have a scan. And in the course of the scan, they found that he had no brain. <laughs> <laughs> there was only, you know, like a thin membrane that's all there was. 
And yet he was a good student, he was doing very well. <laughs> but he had no physical brain. So this is a challenge for the materialistic scientists who want to reduce everything to material constituents, mm -hmm. who think that consciousness is a product of matter, mm -hmm. especially of the, you know, the sophisticated brain cells. Here's a student with no brain at all, and yet intelligent. Consciousness, according to materialistic scientists, consciousness is a product of the brain. Mm -hmm. A product of matter, namely of, of the brain with its various um, parts. But here the evidence stands in opposition to that materialistic. The brain is crazy, it goes all over the place. Uh, the brain doesn't go all over the place. The brain stays where it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Absolutely. I mean to say the mind. So uh, we could be afraid to use it, you know. Because mind can be used to analyze, to discriminate. So sometimes we you know and encourage to think. You know, because if you think you, you use your mind. So uh, there are two things. Of course, generally, mind is, is sometimes used for the whole subtle body. We sometimes use the mind, the word mind, to refer to the whole subtle body. But technically, there's the mind and then there's the intelligence. There's the mind, and above the mind is the intelligence. Manasasta tu pala here. Higher than the mind is the intelligence. So the in the third canto, Srimad Bhagavatam, Kapil Dev explains the difference between every element and every other element. Every element is known by its characteristics. So the characteristic of the mind, the main characteristic is Sankalpa Bikalpa, accepting and rejecting. The mind is attracted to something, or the mind is uh, repulsed by something, um, turned off, as we say. Uh, so, sankalpa vikalpa. And because the mind is chanchal, flickering, it sometimes is attracted to something and then uh, against and for and against. Like you walk past a store window and you think, ooh, I'd like to have that. Then you think, no, it's not that nice. It's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. I don't think so. <laughs> but, and then you go back and forth, back and forth. The, uh, you know, boys and girls, you know, she's really nice. She's not that nice, but she's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> so the mind is flip-flopping. But the nature of the, and therefore we, when we say we're someone's on the mental platform, you know, it's me, it's all coming and going, coming and going, coming and going. But the intelligence, the function of the intelligence is analysis. <coughs> so you see something in the window and you look at it and you say, well, that's pretty nice, but, on the other hand, but, but, but when the intelligence comes into play, it starts to analyze. Do I need this? Can I afford this? What's the actual total cost of ownership? They're charging this much. But I mean, I'm going to look at the car. I have to, there's petrol. There's taxes. There's parking. There's uh, repairs. There's, so they're saying it costs this much, but really it's going to cost me that much per year. interest and this and that, so you can afford it. And at the end, you make a calculation, you decide on the basis of analysis. Um, 
this car will save me money, but this car will get me into more trouble than it should be. And when the intelligence has settled the matter, then it's settled. The intelligence doesn't flip flop that way. The intelligence analyzes and reaches a conclusion. And therefore, the intelligence is supposed to direct the mind. My dear mind, you've brought this matter to the higher court. You've been flip-flopping on it. Uh, and our, our judgment is yes. Or our judgment is no. Or whatever the judgment may be. The intelligence gives its conclusion. And that's it. Now the mind is supposed to follow the direction of the intelligence. Therefore, the intelligence has to be strong. And the intelligence has to be purified. Therefore, our reading books is so important because the books give us the give us understanding by which the intelligence can be properly directed. The books, uh, the philosophy engages the intelligence and gives us direction for the intelligence. And intelligence, Sri Prabhupada said, is the next door neighbor of the soul. So when the intelligence is purified by Krishna consciousness, informed by Krishna consciousness, then that strong intelligence, even if our intelligence, some people are very intelligent, but their intelligence is polluted and doesn't help them. So even though we may not be the most intelligent, if one becomes Krishna conscious, then he's intelligent. And that intelligence, Krishna consciousness, Udhi uh, Yoga, Tadami Bhuti Yogam Krishna says, engage in service to me and I'll give you the intelligence. You can come back to me. So it's important for us um, to engage our intelligence in Krishna's service. Um, then the intelligence can control the mind. Otherwise, the mind, the mind is also tricky. The mind wants to engage the intelligence in its service. I want this. And now the intelligence is busy coming up with reasons why that's a good idea. <laughs> that's called rationalization. It's the stupidest idea in the world, but the mind is fixed on it, and the intelligence is now ruled by the mind. And so the mind is coming up with ideas of why this stupid thing makes sense. Particularly the mind says, sense gratification. And intelligence, if it's not properly fixed, starts thinking, working out ways for sense gratification. Prabhupada gave the example that a, a cat is very intelligent. The, mm, if you're keeping some milk on, in, in a bowl on, on the table in the kitchen, uh, and you're 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 just sitting there, and the cat doesn't do anything. It doesn't go after. It might want the milk, but it doesn't do anything. But when you leave the kitchen, then the cat jumps up on the table and, and starts drinking the milk. The cat has intelligence. If I drink this milk while she's there, she'll shoo me away. But if I wait till she's gone, then I can drink the milk. So that's intelligence, but it's intelligence used for sense gratification. So materialistic civilization needs intelligence applied for sense gratification. There are intelligent people, brilliant people, great scientists, great engineers, great uh, thinkers. Powerful intelligence, you know, great uh, scores in the intelligence department. But they're misapplying their intelligence in the service of sense gratification. In the service of eating, sleeping, mating, planning. So then their intelligence is uh, now uh, no longer in charge. The horses, the senses, are You've seen that illustration in the Bhagavad Gita that the, the driver has lost control of the reins 
and the horses are running wild and they're driving the chariot. Passengers of terror. <laughs> so if we don't use our intelligence to control the mind, and the mind to control the senses, and it will go the other way, the senses will drag down the mind, and the mind will mm, enslave the intelligence. And then one is lost. Bhuti Nasha Pranashiti. Yes. There are um, some scientists or some schools who learn these patterns, how mind is uh, reacting on different things. Yeah, and they, they call it like matrix. And they call it what? Huh? They do. It's matrix. Matrix. Ma 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 matrix. Ma matrix. Ma matrix. 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 Yeah. 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 So, like mind in this situation is reacting like this, in this situation like this, and they um, practice, uh, they have some practices how to control it. Uh, and my question is, uh, like, is it good, like we, when we chant Japa, our mind is everywhere, but not in Krishna, unfortunately, is it good to use <coughs> such techniques? Is it, there are various mind, mm -hmm ways of controlling the mind recommended by the different schools and something is there with a, a matrix and then there's all sorts of different ideas for controlling the mind different schools, different techniques silver mind control lots of them um, so are these recommended? not very much recommended because then our mind becomes uh, drawn toward the techniques. Uh, it's a two-step thing. You say, okay, I'm going to employ this technique, and with this technique, I'm going to think of Krishna. Right? That's the idea. Um, not just, I'm like, now I'm sitting and chanting, and if somewhere, then I can do one small piece, let's say, some technique, like, like, and it stops, and I can chant and think about Krishna. Yeah. <laughs> There's some technique, just Sachinandan Raj was speaking yeah. last week that there's something in Patanjali Yoga called Patipaksha Dhyan. When the mind is going on and on and on, especially if you're uh, in a negative way, this stupid person, he's just a fool, blah, 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 and he did this and he does that. <laughs> You know, with Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, he's such a fool. <laughs> and it goes on and on, and, you know. So, Prati Bhakshatyan is a technique that uh, Prati means the opposite. So, just hold on, mind, let's think something good. Either we'll think something good, or we'll think about what we have to be grateful for. Or how we can appreciate the, the good. So now the mind is uplifted because it's not in that negative uh, space. But it's you know, seen from the point of view of uplifting. So these things are there. Um, and they may sometimes be helpful. But the main thing is just. Krishna says, bring the mind back to the sound. Uh, attentive chanting. Attentive chanting. Especially if we get into some school, you know, there, there's always some, someone who's got a school of thought with powerful techniques. This is like called uh, in America drugstore psychology. It means you, you go to the drugstore and buy a book for $3 and it's got powerful techniques for controlling the mind, powerful techniques for unleashing your human potential. Uh, powerful, you know, the, the, the world of psychology, what we call popular psychology, is full of these, you know, instant solutions. You buy this book, you read it, it'll change your life. The whole world will, will look different to you. 
after you master these simple te three simple techniques that can change your world. Da 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 da. You know, it's just like we've got the the, the method, and they sell some books and they hold some seminars and they. They do well in collecting money. And then it goes out of style and there's the next one. Um, we've seen, now I've 70, so over the last so many decades, I've seen these methods come and go. So the mind control, the forum, uh, what was it? Uh, Earhart uh, Seminar. Scientology has its techniques, and there's, there's just dozens and dozens and dozens of them. And they come, and they go, and they come, and they go. Um, but the simplest thing is what Krishna is recommending here. Uh, so by Mana Krishna Parana, just think of Krishna, because Krishna will purify the mind. Uh, just doing, following whatever technique is in the psychology book, whether it's a matrix or a forum or a, a, a triangle or a, a, a septagon or a, a this or a that, doesn't automatically purify the mind. But as soon as the mind is in touch with Krishna, the mind is purified and uplifted, um, brought to its natural position. So. <coughs> We should think of Krishna. Uh, of course, yena kena prakarena. Somehow or other, think of Krishna. So this technique, that technique. If somehow or other I think of Krishna, that's very good. But the simplest technique is just chant Hare Krishna. That's what's worked. How are we, how are we sitting here? Some of us have been, you know, we've come here and we're chanting Hare Krishna. And that's, brought us to Krishna Consciousness. Uh, some of us, you know, have been here for a longer time. What's kept us? This is chanting Hare Krishna. And I've seen some, I've seen people who, they get old, you know, they discover the latest philosophical, uh, sorry, psychological technique. You know, they find a way to, that, that answers all questions. And next thing you know, they're not Krishna conscious anymore. They're all teaching seminars in this or that method of mind control. So then, that means Maya got them. Uh, so the, the simplest recommended method, which we've seen working. Uh, if someone sincerely chants Hare Krishna, they may be a brilliant person, they may be a simple person, they may have so many... Uh, maybe a sinful person, really. But Jato Darkana Margana, the mind becomes purified. So uh, there's nothing better than this chanting of Hare Krishna. There may be this technique or that technique. But this is the best technique. Just chant Hare Krishna. Uh, jump in the kirtan. Chant. But we, tend, we tend to reject it because it's so simple. We tend to reject it because it's, yeah, we're, we're looking. Well, why can't I control it? Let me read this book, that book. And then finally, if we just change our vision. Yes. Outside of chanting 16 rounds, there are devotees who always chant Maha Mantras, doing service, walking. Sure. And there are others who like say, okay, now I do service, I think of Krishna, I do it for Krishna, but I don't chant, I think of Krishna. Is there one of these two methods more? Well, as far as possible, we should chant. Now there may be, uh, you know, if I'm editing a book, really hard to chant while I'm trying to, to edit. If you're doing translation, you know, 
translating English to French or French to English and at the same time trying to chant. Mm -hmm. That will be quite a formidable challenge. Uh, so, but as far as, so then we you know, just remember Krishna and act for the service of Krishna. But I'm driving, I'm walking, I'm, I'm doing this, I'm doing that, and I can chant Hare Krishna. Prabhupada gave the example that the, they were making incense, the devotees had an incense company in California. And so you know, you're dipping the sticks in oil and doing this and that. And the Prophet said, well, who's making the incense? They're chanting Hare Krishna. So it's simple, man. as far as possible, chant. And if you're not chanting, uh, not chanting, still the mind can Hare Krishna. So the mind can be fixed in Krishna consciousness. Kirtani is the mind. Well, we're at 8 o'clock, but there's a story, since we were saying that just chant Hare Krishna, this is a story that was told several times, I've heard from His Holiness Bhakti Charamash, um, about the installation of the deities in the Netherlands. Do you know that story? There was, <coughs> we had a temple in Amsterdam, and thought they were going to install the deities of, of the Lord. And they'd invited the press, they'd invited so many guests, everyone's crammed into the um, temple. The television is there with their cameras. And Srila Prabhupada is there. But they were doing, the devotees were doing, who were trying to organize the installation were doing everything wrong. This wasn't there, that wasn't there, this was wrong, that was wrong. And Srila Prabhupada was uh, trying to straighten them out, but they, the more he would give them the directions, the more confused and <laughs> they would become. He, where's the pushpa flowers? So they went out to make pushpanda, which is uh, flower rice. <laughs> everything was and Pablo was getting more and more angry it's just you know, he didn't care that the television was there he didn't care what guests were there where is this what about that why you have not done this what about this you know it's just when Pablo was angry he could become very angry <laughs> and the, this crew couldn't do anything right so Pablo and meanwhile, there was one hippie boy there who was, he was sort of a regular at the temple, and, but not a devotee, but you know, one of those people. And he, 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 his mind was always going this way and that way, and he would be talking about this and that. And when the devotee, when he, 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 he finally become too much, and at the temple the devotees would say, why don't we just chant like Krishna? And then he'd chant Hare Krishna. It was a constant, that would be their advice to him, because he was one of those impossible people. So why don't you just chant Hare Krishna? So this boy was there at the installation ceremony. So he's watching, and Prabhupada's becoming more and more angry. And the boy says to Sri Prabhupada, why don't you just chant Hare Krishna? The prophet put his hand to his feet. I heard he said to him, that is the best advice I have got today. I, I never heard that. No. But, but when I heard Maharaj tell the story. Shri the Prabhupada Ki Jai Sabaveta Bhakta Vinda Ki Jai Kaur Pradhanande